But we want to be at the price point that your daughter and son and law mm -hmm. can afford a home. Starter homes. And your children can afford a home sure. and not want to pay rent. But in order to do that, we have to hit the market at the perfect point. How do we hit that perfect point when we're watching D.C. go crazy? I said that. Rick Jasper did and Paul Kiker did. I did. I'm responsible for that statement. We are seeing D.C. go crazy. We are seeing D.C. give away America. We're seeing them give away our fuel. We're seeing them give away our energy. We are seeing D.C. go crazy. Loaded question to you. Would you leave Georgia and go to D.C. to represent us? No. No. Well, I like that answer. Well, I think in our I like that case answer. is that in the Georgia legislature, we're effective. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Why would you go somewhere you can't make a difference? That's right. Exactly. Don't you love that answer? Well, and I do, and I'll tell you, I, I was talking to my son, my oldest in construction, mm -hmm. and I've had several analyst reports that are talking about Georgia and how good a job you guys have done in building our infrastructure and making us attractive for the onshoring and manufacturing that's coming back. Mm -hmm. So, we're, I mean, you are in a place where you can make a difference in the local community mm -hmm. and have done a fantastic job at that because sure. out of all the 50 states, and these guys don't Number talk one. about yeah. here, I mean, they talk about Georgia is the, you know, poster child for what has needed to be done to build that infrastructure to put us in a position. So, yeah, I don't blame you. Well, I, I'll just tell you, I think and you just saw the people have confidence when we erected mm -hmm. the elected Brian Kemp as governor, right. who has done a great job. And all the things we do in the legislature are very big focus on making sure that they're pro-business, mm -hmm. pro-family, pro-Georgian, mm -hmm. and and stay in the course. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Now he says keep on chopping, which is just his little nickname. You know, <laughs> yeah. Look, catch word, but it's true that whatever we do, make sure we do our pro business. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. And you know what I love about, I've been doing an estate sale, and it's so cool to me when I find things that say made in the USA. But I will tell you, the age of the things I'm finding that say made in the USA are those old craftsman's tools, mm -hmm. those old SK tools, those old things. We want it to come back today to Georgia, where when we purchase something, we turn over the product, and on the back it says manufactured in Jasper, Georgia at the Royston Corporation. Yep. We want to see that. We want to see that made in the USA on steel. We want to see it on those products that your, you, you know, your kids could probably own a cabinet shop, and their logo on the back could be made in L. J. Georgia. You know, mm -hmm. we want to see that made in the USA again. I think it's important. Well, I think you look, you know, we all are on Facebook, and you know, I'm scrolling through every day, seeing whose birthday it is, and all that. The number of advertisers that are made in Alabama, mm -hmm. made in Georgia, mm -hmm. made grown and produced like mm -hmm. Marshall's going to buy some sheets today that are grown and woven in America. Isn't that awesome? And yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. but I think we all know that and we feel the threat from foreign entities like China mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we need to kind of take some of this back and make sure we're investing in our state. Right. And I think it's real important, you know, like we'll talk about David Ralston in a minute, but, you know, I was the co-chairman of the Rural Development Council and that's his favorite thing. He mm -hmm. made sure we got out of the state, found out issues throughout rural Georgia. Mm -hmm. What could we do to make sure the employers have the capital mm -hmm. to do things, the people, the training, whatever it was, our role is to make sure we could we found ways to ensure success throughout Georgia. Mm -hmm. That's that is so awesome. And and I'll tell you the other thing about Georgia being number one in what we do. We're doing it in a nice way. Nobody's fighting, nobody's cussing, nobody's screaming. You know, we, we've seen some stupid negative ads. It happens. We've seen, it we, happens. We've seen, some, we've seen some negative ads, and I probably got kicked off Facebook this morning because I said something you got like, kicked off I Facebook. wouldn't let that man walk my dog. <laughs> and if you've seen the commercial with him walking his dog, then you know who I'm talking about. But we got to say, you are a bulldog. Absolutely. And you love this shirt. Oh, it's pretty cool. But I can't give that it That is to a you. cool shirt. But is that not the coolest thing? We are supporting Georgia. We are supporting the rural America. I grew up in Atlanta and Orlando, so I was a city slicker. But let me tell you something. When I got here, I love the way they do things here. Mm -hmm. Don't you love the way they do things here? Mm -hmm. And it's just, you're about to be a farmer. Are you going to grow a lot of stuff? I'm working in that direction. I am. That is so cool. <laughs> 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 to be a farmer, so he's one of these people that you will want to 
you know, make sure that our apple growers, our vineyards, our tree growers, mm -hmm. our whatever, you know, can can make a living at what they love. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. Isn't that a good slogan? Make a living at what you love. Mm -hmm. You'll have to make sure you know, get to know your county agent like I was all those years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. In that in that process already, so yeah, 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 those things are so very very important, and and Georgia is. I can't wait till people say, "Did you know Georgia's number one in the nation?" Well, I think they know that. I yeah, hope so. I think they know that Florida is great. Yes, yes, yes. And and who runs those three states? Yeah, and, and right. Republican yeah. leadership. I'm not afraid to say it. And that and they they value people's freedom and their rights and their um, ability to do to do great things. And that's. What, did you teach your daughter to shoot a gun? Yes. Did you teach your daughter to oh, shoot yeah, a gun? Yeah, 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 yeah. And and it's funny because the other day we went somewhere and and somebody was with me and got their gun out. And they were alarmed that I don't carry a gun because I'm completely pro-gun. But I don't carry one. That's stupid because I'm a woman out alone a lot by myself. I need to carry a gun because it is, number one, it's smart. This, well, I'll tell you an interesting story. So with Katie, it went from her crying that she did not want to learn how to shoot a gun. And I just gradually worked her into it and kept her around it. To she got uh, the first thing she did when she turned 21 is get her conceal and carry permit, and she carries now, and she's on the road. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and but we've had lots of conversations on you know you never show it. This is last resort. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely you know. But but that's an important. That it's important in mm -hmm. in in all of history to be able to defend yourself, and even sure. more so in a society that that's got a lot of hate and bitterness in it that ours does now. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll just go. I'll go back to you know Speaker Ralston. I remember, gosh, this is to 2013 or so, and I worked on all those big gun bills that really ensured people's ability. Mm -hmm. He did. Throughout the state, mm -hmm. not just in these little bitty areas where mm -hmm. they had, but 100% behind it. I mm -hmm. mean, absolutely give people the opportunity if they mm -hmm. choose to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and Speaker Ralston was just always at my back, mm -hmm. making sure that it's pushing, hey, you can do this, we mm -hmm. can make this happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it did, and so Georgia has, you know, there's still just a few things we need to work on, but I generally we are in great shape. Mm -hmm. Well, at the same time, he called me and said, I want you to have Andrew Clyde on the show. And sure. I said, okay. And I didn't know Andrew Clyde from Adam's House Cat, but I started reading his ads and I started looking and I said, okay, yeah, he thinks the way I do. Yeah. And and so, you know, that another that's another one that we all look at, our freedom to protect ourselves. Serving on a jury last year in Cherokee County and seeing what a man did in armed robbery, and seeing that we gave him life made me happy because mm -hmm. this was not his first armed robbery and this was not his second, this was his about fourth. And and I'm like, and we had the right as the jurors to lay down the law and mm -hmm. find him guilty. Good. And and I think that, that even impressed me more because the lady that was robbed, she didn't have a gun on her and she had no way to protect herself, you know. And, and that kind of scared me a little bit. Now when I pump gas at night, I think differently. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure it's not smart to pump gas at night. It's not smart to even pull over at night. But, but sometimes we do stupid things like that. But I think that Georgia, and you know, they made fun of Brian Kemp because he did that ad with the gun, remember? <laughs> My favorite commercial ever. <laughs> I love that commercial. That's great. <laughs> I love that yeah, commercial. That's great. I thought that was whoever wrote that, planned that, did that. I love that oh, commercial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So we were talking before we came out about what it costs to do a house. And, and yes. you said for a $260,000 mortgage, it's about 1600 a month now. Yeah, so in January of this year, well, when interest rates were artificially held low, I mean, mm -hmm. they, they are. And right. that, that's, the, right. that's the reason we're in the problem we're in. Yeah. They held them too low for too long and too much stimulus in the economy. And then you've got an administration that's pulling the you know, energy disaster. Mm -hmm. So now they have to react. They ha Instead of being proactive, they have to react. So in January, a $1,600 payment, approximate numbers, guys, would buy you a $500,000 home. $500,000? Yeah. Yeah. $500,000. That, that is so, so cool. Now, 1600 is a pretty important number because that's, in, what, 70, 75% of the population mm -hmm. can afford that sure. number. Okay. Sure. And average rent is 1600 or more. Yes. So there you so go. So that, that puts yeah. you right. And it actually be maybe more. I just don't want to overestimate because I cannot remember that number. Statistics in my head. Mm -hmm. So today, 
at interest rates around seven, seven and a half percent on a 30 year mortgage, a $1,600 payment will buy you approximately a $265,000 house. And I have a $260,000 yeah. one for sale if y'all are interested. Right. Pick up the phone and call me. Two sixty. dollars Well, and, so and you know. So it's half. half. You're getting it's half, half what you wanted, yeah. And, the, you know, and my argument was when you artificially, and, and so my, Katie has got a job now, and she's married. Kel's in Milledgeville. He's been working. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. But I'm renting. But I said, wait. And here's the reason why. I would rather have a 7.5% mortgage and buy a house that's 260 mm -hmm. than I would a 2.5% mortgage and buy a house that's 500 because you can pay the 260 off quicker. Mm -hmm. It's the same payment, right? You're mm -hmm. paying the bankers either way. They're making the same amount no matter what. Mm -hmm. So the question is now is what occurs, right? So something has to break in the economy. Globalization is coming to an end, so we've been able to offshore the inflationary pressures that have been coming through our monetary policy since 1971 when we left the gold standard. So the question is, what's going to break? You know, deglobalization is occurring, so we have to have onshoring, but we can't compete with the wages that are in China. So either wages have to go up substantially or asset prices have to come down or a combination of two. Will that play out over five or ten years? Will it play out over six months? I, I don't know. But, you, People you know. are scared, Paul. Well, and, 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 and they should be. They, they should be, and here's the reason why. So the monetary policy that's been undertaken by the Federal Reserve since Alan Greenspan has, has been tried to be proactive in postponing a recession. And, and I understand, right? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. I understand why. But we have to look at the decisions that have been made. And what's occurred is, especially after the 2008 crisis, let's, let's be proactive. We didn't have inflation in place, but we got arrogant to believe that inflation's not going to happen to us. So now we, we've pushed asset prices to the point that's, that we've, and we've stayed off those recessions. Recessions are good, right? But we want to raise our kids in an environment today where they never have any trouble or strain, but. You don't get strong in the weightlifting room mm -hmm. by not experiencing pain. That pain is good, right? Struggles make us stronger. So I'm so strong now. If we have, <laughs> I'm so strong now. If we, yeah, you are. You I are. Am. I am. So if and we, you know if we, ha I'd go to battle with you in a heartbeat because yeah. I know you're strong enough to handle the heat. That's right. That's right. So we postponed these recessions so long that companies that should have failed did not fail. So now we have all kinds of kindling, kind of like California when they decided not to manage their forests anymore and let's let it all go natural. You have to manage the economy. So if the recession is recessionary spark, you know, gets out of control, then now we're facing an economic uh, uh, situation that's very similar to those California wildfires. Will it happen? We don't know. Nobody knows the future, but the problem is our risk is so great now that that it could get out of hand in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Now, so you know, so the question is, let's say we do have a recession, the Fed backs off and cuts interest rates again. Well, everybody in the world knows the playbook for that. Lever yourself up to the hill, which is an inflationary. So we're going to be walking this teetering line for several years until we work out of it, and until until we decide to make the best long-term decisions for our children and grandchildren and not the best for us to feel good about ourselves and line our pockets now. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest frustration. There you go. There you go. Not optimistic. I don't see that happening. Not with the leadership we have right now. The, and Congress's inability to do anything. Right. Neither one has enough mandate to do anything. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting to me to watch them in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. You know what I think is going to happen? And this is sad, but working so intimately with families for the past 24 years like I have, um, one thing, you know, families, a lot of families have horrible things that happen, right? They have ad addictions and alcohol, you know, drugs, and, you know, it's life. You walk life with these people. And I had a counselor on a ministry that I was involved with one time that was really involved with somebody that was in their family and made the comment, says, you know, they will change when the pain of changing is easier than the pain of staying the same. And the, and the only thing that's going to change our direction is going to be a recession that's so severe that everybody in our country feels the pain. And the pain of those decisions that they're supporting right now 
will the pain of changing will be a lot less than the pain of staying the same. And we're headed we're headed in that towards that brick wall of pain at 150 miles an hour. And it's heartbreaking because you can see it coming. And I hate to say it, know, I've been I telling you, I told you a year I ago, I saw this coming. I know. I, know. I didn't know when it was going to hit, I know. but we knew it was coming. You just don't know the timing. And, and when we have people pre-approved to buy a house in Georgia who, who, you know, and then we call them back and say, gosh, because now you can you can't get the two eighty nine house, you can get the two hundred thousand dollar house. There are no two hundred thousand dollar houses available. Not yet. And, much, and regulation and cost yeah. of expense. But but it's tough. So when you now your phone rings, it, when your phone rings today, are people scared? Are they nervous? Are they happy? Are, what are, what are the emotions of people today? Uh, just when you're talking to them, you know the it, it's all over the place. You know, mainly when people call me, it's that they're having issues with the state mm -hmm. or the federal government, and they're just trying to find a solution, mm -hmm. and they're frustrated. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're good at. Mm -hmm. You know, by administrative assistance, we've trained them how to answer the phone, how to root out the real issues and help mm -hmm. them. But I think when I talk to the just people in the community, the grocery store, wherever, they're nervous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just nervous. Like just, you know, how's it, what's going to happen? next year mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know and then we're going to be in this dead zone because you're going to have a presidential election coming up congress is unable to do anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it's it just there's just they're not going to be able to do anything now, so, they're going to be deadlocked uh, well, yeah so it's important <clears throat> here in georgia that we i think you'll see us take the bull by the horns on a couple of things mm -hmm. you know we're going to do a tax cut you know, Governor Kemp did not promise many things, mm -hmm. but with the federal money that we have that's sitting in the bank, we're going to give it back to Georgians mm -hmm. who've mm -hmm. had tax mm -hmm. payments. We're going to right. that's huge. send it back to them. That, that, is, a that is, know, is a big deal. That is a big deal. It's $500 or $300, whatever, but cumulatively, that's a, a way over a billion dollars. And I mean, that helps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll see us invest in that right off the bat. I think that's going to be probably the first thing we get out and get going. Mm -hmm. Now, if I understand correctly, you had, you had projected based on a tax base, business was better than you thought, revenues were better than you thought, but you've also got a five-year plan in place that's taking, the, the, and, and, you know, that's being implemented. Right. To, so to you income tax. That's what yeah. Saying. So you can act, and, and that infrastructure development yeah. that that some of these research analysts were talking about, and then you're going to vote to hand some of that back to the to the people of this state. That's the way government should be run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that's huge because you're not you're not choosing to take that extra revenue and go well. Let's start an agenda and do this, 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 and this. I mean, you're right, and that's the biggest thing right now. You know, we do have surplus in the budget. Yeah. But I think you'll see us be very cautious and thoughtful because, I mean, we know just what uh -huh. you described is coming. We don't want to promise or, or spend right. money and then have to pull back. Right. It's horrible to have to do that to people. Right. So you'd rather just be cautious and thoughtful as we have been. You know, back when Governor Dill was governor and I was there, you know, very cautious mm -hmm. as, as things grew. Man, I loved him. You know, mm. uh, he did the most wonderful. Loved, loved Nathan Deal. I, I can yeah. never say enough good about him. Never. He really, um, Sunday at Speaker's funeral, <coughs> had the best eulogy. It mm -hmm. was mm. touching. He, you know, uh, he did I would pick up the phone call, Becky Brandon in his office. Oh, yeah. Becky Brandon was a yeah. great lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But Just, she was yeah. Becky was great. Very yeah. helpful person. Yeah. Yeah. Out in the community. And and that's what we are looking to you and to you because people are going to be coming in. I'm sure you're getting a lot of nervous Nellies coming in. What do I do? I've been pretty proactive on that. Yeah. I mean, Good. we we've been communicating all year starting early in the year that we were playing defense. Mm -hmm. And we take our right now we're playing pl defense. What are you yeah. playing? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be David Green? Hey, we. We're playing offense a little bit right now, yeah, but yeah. Be, you know, yeah, you want to be offensive. I mean, yeah, you know, you try to keep moving the ball. And, yeah, uh, and yeah, I think people are. You know, as I talk to people, they talk about their four hundred ones and mm -hmm. retirement accounts, and yeah, you know, they're. And I tell Marcia. Honey, don't even look at it. Right don't now. even look at it. No, no, no. no. <laughs> and you've told me that all along that you have people that sometimes look once a year. Oh yeah, and they're always more successful. And stress. Yeah. They're always more successful. So the most successful people actually are the ones that are, that either really enjoy it and they do it, 
they don't need somebody like me, right? Mm -hmm. But they're doing it because that's what they enjoy doing, not because they don't trust somebody or something like that. Then there's the other people that they take the time to go through, ask us about strategy, understand the strengths and weaknesses, and then they implement it and they look at it once a year. And they have more peace with their money than anybody else, and I swear they're always more successful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, and now that doesn't mean that we don't talk a couple of times a year or things of that nature. If they have, if they have questions, they'll call, but, but it's not an obsession for them, mm -hmm. right? The ones that struggle the most are the ones that are like, they'll listen to Fox News or CNN and they're like, sell everything. Mm -hmm. And then they'll, you know, the market will jump, we'll buy everything. And I'm like, I'm like, you realize you're just making emotional decisions. You're not actually investing. You're, you're, yeah. you're chasing the popularity contest. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so as long as you have a strategy, you know, and you stick to it and you understand that strategy, you're operate good. it. Right, you got to operate it and make adaptations when you need to. Now, Rick, you said something, um, an emotional thing. We're all still emotional with the loss of the Speaker of the House, David yeah. Ross. Yes, dear friend. He, he was more than a friend to so many, and, and there's nowhere you go that somebody doesn't say, he helped me with this, he did this for me, he helped my daddy, he did this. That's what good men do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I had said to me, with Cherie going to run for that, I think it's amazing, she can carry the torch to keep Georgia bright because he loved to see every corner of Georgia doing well. It wasn't just these mountains that he loved so mm -hmm. much. It was every corner of Georgia. And uh, she has an well, opportunity. Yeah, I, think, I think all of us have that happen to us. You know, I, I followed Garland Penhouse mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and Tom Graves, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who were just great mm -hmm, legislators mm -hmm. and, and very involved in their communities and, and, and took what their communities want exactly as the number one thing they do and I think David Ralston did that as a representative and, mm -hmm. and the speaker on the other but as you talked to him I elected him as speaker mm -hmm. you elected him mm -hmm. as the state representative right and mm -hmm. you would find you know tickle people oh, I just can't call him I said listen you call him he'll talk to you before he'll talk to me mm -hmm. I said, mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. trust me, his folks will answer your question and help you. And that's, mm -hmm. But we're all, you know, she'll have that same opportunity to to live on the legacy of, of the people who came before you. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, I was fortunate in the two men that I talked sure. about. And, uh, sure. And she'll have that also. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. You've been there long enough. What does it take to be a great representative legislator? Listen. I mean, I think that's the... You know, people have the misconception that you, you go down there and you can throw lightning bolts and make things happen. Right. And you can't. It, it's it's a group mm -hmm. to get things done. But I think the main thing I think I try to do is listen. And as David Ross had told me many years ago, call people back. Even though you might not be able to agree with them or help them or do mm -hmm. what they want, at least listen and, and see what they have to say. You're going to pick up some stuff. And I think... Uh, I'm good at that. For being the county agent for 30 mm -hmm. years, you just kind of learn to listen. You know, yeah. And Listening then, is important. Most people don't know how to do it. Yeah, and then really look for the root cause of the problem and then try to fix it for them. And uh, that's what I think is listening. And, and just being and being available. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I go to the grocery store and people he say... He cracks me up, gives his phone number to everybody. <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah. He does. They'll, they'll come up to you and go, hey, I've been really mean to call you. I said, why haven't you called me? My phone number's in the book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't hide from anybody. You know, mm -hmm. just call me. You know, probably not home, but I'll call mm -hmm. you back. And, mm -hmm. But just, you do so much. Just mm -hmm. talking to people at the grocery store, the drug store, football game. Yeah. Wherever. And, mm -hmm. you know, but being available, especially us, because we are the closest to the people. And, mm -hmm. and I had great mentor. John Meadows from Gordon County was just really helped me understand the big picture of, of trying to be reasonable, number one, mm -hmm. but be effective. Mm -hmm. You've got to be reasonable yeah. to be effective down there. And, that, and that's where some of our members kind of get out of whack. They're not reasonable. They get frustrated. But because Georgia's a big state, and me being mm -hmm. that co-chairman of the Rural Development Council all these years, I know how diverse Georgia is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, you know, what I do here, surely it's going to work here, but may help there. You mm -hmm. have to kind of be a, 
thoughtful about this stuff. Uh, I'm thinking about a pecan grower or a peach grower in South Georgia. You're dealing with that the same way you're dealing with the traffic issues we have in Fannin County. Uh -huh. Because Fannin County has too many people coming to these beautiful mountains because we told y'all all about it. So, <laughs> I did. I did. That's good. And, and now these, everybody's going, them realtors are bringing in all these strangers. Well, these strangers fall in love with these mountains, and you know that. Well, they fall in love with our way of life. You can't yes. blame it on the yes. realtors. Yeah. What you blame it on is the fact that we we still treat each other with respect. We we demand excellence out of our our teachers. local yeah. teachers and yes. education, yep. and we, for the most part, you know, there's every community's got those crooks. But people do what they say they're going to do, mm -hmm. and they're reasonable mm -hmm. to work with, and they agree to disagree, mm -hmm. and that fosters a community that that everybody wants to be in and our state legislator has done a fun, fantastic job of continuing to fuel that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what, what we've got to continue to do is be the leaders in our local community so that those people that move here from those other states because they like our way of life don't change it to what they destroyed, you know, what was exactly. destroyed and where they came from. Yeah. Because there's some benefits of, of some of the things they do, but what, what we've got to help people understand is, you know, it's not the squeaky wheel that needs the grease all the time, right? And the people who cry the loudest don't need the most help. You know, we, we need to help those people that need help, and we need to demand out of those other people that are just out of pure laziness, get, get you know, help yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And if we can continue that, then we can continue to be a light for the rest of the nation. But we, as locals, have a responsibility to continue to be leaders in everything that we do. And, and... And like you said, be reasonable and communicate with these people and win them over with kindness and, and help them see that our way of life is a good way of life. Yeah. What do you see that will go through the house this year that is really important to, to all of Georgia? Well, I think the, you know, the, the tax cut is going to be the biggest that will be the biggest thing the news will talk about. Mm -hmm. And some people will say we shouldn't be doing that because we should be funding other things. I think we'll fund a lot of other stuff reasonably. Mm -hmm. You know, Always the budget's the biggest one. Mm -hmm. yeah, with the budget surplus, there's some gaps of things we still need to work on. You know, state employees pay, even though we gave them a raise last year, still woefully low. Mm -hmm. you know, and we're still going to work on that. I think um, you know, the budget number one, I'm working on electric vehicle taxing, you know, right now. Mm -hmm. Transportation's going to be a big issue this year. Rural health always is, you know, even though. It seems to be rural health care is stabilizing some. We still don't have enough practitioners, mm -hmm. either in the nurse side or the doctor side or the specialty side. Do you see a doctor or do you see a practitioner? I see a doctor. I see a practitioner. What do you see? I see both. Both. Yeah, yeah. both. Yeah, yeah, I see both. Yeah. It depends yeah. on which day yeah. it is. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I got kind of tickled because I always feel like the practitioner, I hate to say this, gives you more time than a doctor <laughs> does. But I, I timed it the other day. I waited 45 minutes for my appointment, and they were in there less than three minutes. So they are pushed to the max to yeah. get to get people in and out. So the barrier to entry is really high. It's it's tough. And 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 the the risk that they carry in that industry. Mm -hmm. Most mm -hmm. people I know that get in healthcare don't want to be a doctor because of the lawsuits mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. everything. The responsibility that goes along with it. So our healthcare system is is in shambles. Mm -hmm. yeah, but we've yeah. done. I'll tell you though. I just want to brag on what we've done in the legislature in the past few years. You know, we have really increased the number of residency programs to the maximum. That's great. Residency is really controlled by the feds, and mm -hmm. we're at maximum. We created a new medical school in Columbus. Mm -hmm. You know, and with Mercer Medical, mm -hmm. just looking at more rural doctors. Did not know that. Yeah, we've expanded the the group that we work with at Mercer in, in Macon. Mm -hmm. Those all rural doctors. Are you ever in Macon? Oh yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I want to invite you to go to Poplar, uh, Poplar Street downtown. One of my friends, my director for many, many years in the Atlanta TV market, passed away. In his memory and in his honor, they're doing a five block downtown music and lights for the community. And it's a gift to the community from this family. And you need to go downtown when you're in Macon. Just go to Poplar Street, and it's mm -hmm. five block. And, and she sent me some of it last night, and we showed it on the air. It is, it is so cool that a it's family. A holiday light thing. Yes, okay. yes. These are these are great Christian family who supported many many missionaries. He was one of the first to publicize. Um, he did WATC out of Atlanta. They started that in his Woodstock home location. Mm -hmm. 
And so they have done this in honor of him. So if you're in Macon, I'm, I'm going to challenge you. They have shows that begin at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock um, through the week. Well, my daughter, Elizabeth, lives in down near Warner Roberts. Well, in there Center, you go. Centerville. Send so Elizabeth. We get to go down there quite a bit and see our granddaughter. <laughs> beautiful, you know. beautiful light display in memory and in honor of somebody that I loved greatly. Mm. So he died a year ago right now. So. Which, uh, but back to health care, you know, you know, and we worked on making it easier for people to get into nurse residencies and mm -hmm. but i think we're at the max and so we pushed it to so you've done everything you can do on the state level we keep adding you know different schools or adding nursing programs the technical mm -hmm. schools are even are in it they could probably do more mm -hmm. i think you'll see us really pushing them to do more especially on the cna the lower level ones that they can do and but everywhere has a sign up mm -hmm. cna is needed we yeah know, but they can yeah we really do we need to push our school especially to yeah. get that done. But uh, I think we're doing good there. But we can always do more. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's never going to be enough of them. But it's just like teachers, I think. You know, we, we've we increased their pay. Mm -hmm. It's But the environment for working with others is tough. What do you mean by that? Well, I think the environment of working with the public, their demands. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, mm -hmm. Yeah. We, one another and treat other employees is pretty rough. And, it, and, and just being civil. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, we've lost that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. just how to, you know, deal with just to anybody mm -hmm. being civil is one of those things we've just kind of gotten away from. And it makes the teaching profession tougher. It makes it It's hard. In your world and your in real yeah. estate, I think, and everywhere. And, I, and that's the thing I hate about where we're at kind of in life right now is it's just not being so people aren't as kind mm -hmm. no. mm -hmm. well and it's a lack of respect for other people <clears throat> exactly you know the thing is it's like well i got pulled over for speeding not too long ago and uh it was dark so i roll all the windows down flip the lights on put my hands on the steering wheel and i've got my conceal and carry permit my driver's license <laughs> in my hand and he comes up he's like you know what i pulled you over for i'm like yeah I'm speeding sorry <laughs> and uh you know and and he showed mercy because I was kind, and I wasn't that fast, but he's checking me out, and I was honest. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm speeding. I'm not going to lie about it, right? Yeah. yeah. Right away from him. Yeah. I wouldn't want to walk up to a car in the middle of the night with yeah. dark and somebody, you know, and I, and I understand that, that there's, you know, I understand, but I don't understand not showing respect and kindness in a situation mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. It just it doesn't help you. Well, y'all being in the school system, too. Um, oh, yeah. you, you saw that firsthand. Used to, if if our kids got in trouble in school, they got a spanking when they got home. <laughs> if they were disrespectful on the school bus, they got a spanking when they got home. Today, the parents are, well, you don't have to put up with that. It's a different environment. I don't know if you've seen any of that, but it's a different environment. No, I mean, it's, Holly's a teacher, mm -hmm. so I hear this, you know, and that's it's one sad. thing, that's one thing I've realized, you know, I can, I don't know. I would have struggled being a teacher because I was, I mean, I was a disciplinary one with my kids, but you know, there's a danger with that too. I spank my kids, but, but you, you ha I mean, you can, you can lose your kids over spanking your kids. Yeah. Well, I just hear from my daughter, Elizabeth, you know, just the, it is different teaching, you know, mm -hmm. she teaches high school English, wow. which is, oh my goodness, how do you do that? Yeah. How? You She's know. a special lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, you know, uh, but, but I think. A lot of teachers just have great ways of working with kids. They learn over time. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's a gap in teacher education, what we've seen, in making sure that teachers are successful in the first year or two. Mm -hmm. I think we've really honed down all that in our committees. It, it really started to put a little bit of pressure, as much as I think we can, on the university systems to concentrate on that. You know, you'd be surprised how little of that they get in their four-year education of how to deal with kids mm -hmm. yeah. and parents. And parents. I would say the parents and, would be more problem than the kids. And administrators. Yeah. You know, so you have yeah. a first year teacher that's got kids, parents, and administrators, but then just the job, it is tough. Uh -huh. uh, and I've talked to Elizabeth a lot about it. You know, I think Governor Kemp and Richard Wood have tried to put together groups to study that, to try to take some of the pressure off of that. But, you know, one issue that's going to come up, it's very controversial, is school choice. Mm -hmm. You know, they're looking at, you know, what's going on in Florida, you know, you know and, and funding a private individual to take money with them to a private school mm -hmm. or a school of their choice. Right. That's coming mm -hmm. in a bigger way, mm -hmm. I think. And 
And, you know, it's not so much up here in Pickens, Gilmer, Fannin counties. But Although you know, we do have some great private schools here. Oh, we do. We have some yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. We really do. Yeah. yeah. But the, the real burden or desire for that is Cobb, Fulton, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they're because they're people who just have not a quality education mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they're, that's coming and probably. Well, there'll be a big debate over that this year or next year, I'm sure. Are you on any committees with that? Oh, yeah, I'm on all of them yeah, with that. I'm yeah. on every education committee there is with yeah, that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So what, what's the argument for the downside against it? What are people arguing against that, yeah, saying? They, they, what they don't like is, um, I, is jealousy. I have to, have to be straight yeah. with it. You know, they people don't feel that they should fund both systems. And okay. And, and we have one system for public school, and that should be it. And they don't feel the money should follow the child. And we do have some programs now mm -hmm. that do that, but they're not extensive. Okay. But we're talking about extensive. You look at what they've done in Florida, and it hasn't hurt Florida public education mm -hmm. at all. And it's really increased the numbers of private schools and different mm -hmm. schools that where people have choice. Probably they feel raised the bar. Uh, people argue that they're selective. Uh -huh. They only get to take who they want. I have to get that kind of going in my mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if they don't like it, they can kick them out and kick them back in the public school system. And so there's the, all that that goes on. When so, did Holly retire? Uh, well, she you stayed. At, we were talking about that the other day. I think she can retire at 62 because she okay, stayed so home with the kids for 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a big debate. It's yeah. a very passionate debate. Yeah, because I think we all love teachers and love education. To all it takes a special yeah. person to put up with 28 snotty noses every day. I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. It takes a special uh, uh, person. Well, yeah. They and have the, to be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> they have to be amazing. And the parents. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the administration. Oh, yeah. yeah. They have to be amazing. I mean, it's, yeah. it's just that they have a hard job with that. Yeah. It's a hard job. I mean, just running the, the you football disclose? booster club. I don't club. want you to put you on the spot, but does Holly make over 60000 a year? No. Because okay. Holly never went to get her master's. Okay. So she just has her bachelor degree. Right. And it's it's. And they uh, it's say the average income as a realtor, I know that the average income for a household is seventy five thousand or more a year. So if your right. wife were a single parent, she wouldn't even be making the average income for a family. Oh, what no. is that Cherokee County average income? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, we don't live there. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I think in Pickens it's fifty something. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Four, yeah. Yeah. National so. median household sixty two. Yeah. yeah. 62, yeah. 63 for national. And that's counting your San Francisco's that'll skew that up. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So a teacher, a teacher like a police officer, neither one of those have really hit the top of what we should be paying. Well, that, well to, to Georgia, I think, you know, what we've done the last few years, we're at the top of the South. Thank God you got state patrol. Well, and, and, and let me explain this to you, because this is what people don't understand. The, the retirement plan that you have as a teacher even though you may not make as much to begin with, is so far superior to anything else that's out there in the private world. I mean, there's I don't know of a corporation right now that will fund a, a pension plan that has guaranteed inflation adjustment. And I know they've pared that back a little bit, but I mean, it's like, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day that was, you know, wishing they made a little bit more money, and I'm like, yeah, but you're, you're, you've got the equivalent of $2 million in the bank when you retire as a pension that's got a government guarantee behind it, and you don't even have to worry about managing it. <laughs> so there, there are a lot of benefits that we don't see outside of just the, of just the um, uh, pay. So did you like for me to go back to school and be a teacher? Well, no, when, I, when, I, when I talk to retired teachers uh, next week, they'll be, that's the number one question. They always ask is, what is the stability of the TRS, teacher mm -hmm. retirement system? And, and it's very good. You know, it's well funded. And we fund it and they fund it. And school mm -hmm. systems fund it. But it is, it's the premier. It is. By far. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad we offer it. I think yeah. mm -hmm. it really. Uh, so there is incentive to be a teacher today. There oh, is a yeah. lot of incentive to be and a I teacher. Think the, Working with bad, I think you know, it's like my daughter Elizabeth. She has just a passion for helping other children. It's just in her, and there, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I mean, she might do something down the road differently, but I can't see her doing anything differently because it's what she has. It's mm -hmm. that it's who she wants to be and who she is. And, mm -hmm. and my other daughter, that ain't what she is. <laughs> you know? Isn't that funny? And yeah, yeah. It's, it's a difference. Yeah. And, but Elizabeth really loves being a teacher, and most of the teachers I know love being teachers. And, mm -hmm. But they wish that, you know, some of these outside things, administrative oversight, maybe parents' interaction, 
I love parent interaction, but parent positive parent interaction, mm -hmm. building them up, what they're doing is right, mm -hmm. uh, helpful. You know, and we really touched on this past legislative session a couple of things that are that are pro parent to make sure that parents have involvement in what books and sex. Mm -hmm. Boy, well, that's important. Well, yeah. you know, and it's a very controversial thing, but we have we kind of streamlined the ability for a parent to look at a book and challenge it. There's a streamlined process now. It wasn't streamlined. It was there, but it wasn't streamlined. It wasn't it was easy. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. needed to be. Mm -hmm. And 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 what they teach, you know, there's been a lot of controversy about this divisive concepts idea. Well, you know, teaching history doesn't have to be taught in a divisive way. I mean, there's just, just a straight up what it is. But mm -hmm. some schools and schools train teachers to teach it divisively and make you feel bad because what your great grandfather might have done to your great great grandfather. Mm -hmm. We used to say, hey, no, mm -mm. there's a better way to do it. Mm -hmm. There is a better let's, way to do let's it. Let's be thoughtful mm -hmm. and, and calm that down. But let's teach history as history, English as English, and math as math. Let's, mm -hmm. get, let's teach kids what they need to mm -hmm. learn to be successful. It's funny that, that your child teaches English was my favorite teacher in high school. I loved my English teacher, loved her, loved my math teacher. Those are two. Did I excel at any of them? No, but I did okay. But I loved the teacher, and those teachers way back then made such an impression on me. And it, and you know, Holly's made an impression on. Oh yeah. There are kids today who star. are the humans that they are because a teacher. Oh, uh, Marsha, we'll be yeah. in the grocery store and somebody will come up and hug her. Mm -hmm. They taught their daughter. 20 yeah. years ago? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. She'll see some little some little kid, you know, and that she just loves to see him, mm -hmm. you know, but she's like the same way Elizabeth is. Yep. Has that teaching heart, loving heart that wants to see him do well, no matter what. Okay, everybody screams that we are too crowded and we're too this and we're too that. I've been to South Georgia, you've been to Middle Georgia hunting, we've all been down there. Plenty of acreage, plenty of stuff down there. Do we see any growth in Middle Georgia where factories could come in and it could make people move <laughs> yeah. there? I think it'd be oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. A lot. you know, the port is the driver. It's right. A big deal. Right. And you know, if, and, and if you live in the I-16 corridor between Savannah and then Macon and then up to Atlanta, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, you're seeing it. And mm -hmm. not just in warehousing, which there's some complaints about that. A lot of it is warehousing. Mm -hmm. But manufacturing's falling right in there with them, just mm -hmm. because access to the world-class port that we have all invested in mm -hmm. and creates jobs all over. Even you know they can uh, the port authority is a great interview. You'd love them because they can show where the, what's going on in that port, what it does in Gilmer County, what it does in Fannin County. What it oh, does I'd love that. Let's set that up. Well, that the railway's directly to Chatsworth, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, you've got the yeah. inland. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know so. And I think Governor Kemp, if you hear him talk about economic development, certainly a lot goes on in the what we call the metropolitan area of Atlanta. But most of the jobs created in the last three or four years have been outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, they may have been 10 miles outside, but they've mm -hmm. been outside of metro Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and all sorts of things, you know, and the biggest things in the United States are in Georgia right now. Mm -hmm. but, you know, the Rivian plant, Hyundai coming in down in Effingham County. The battery plant over in Jackson. The mm -hmm. next battery plant is going to be built on, in Southwest Georgia or Southeast. Employing about fifteen hundred, I think I heard. Yeah, yeah, of yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And those are all around the electric vehicle world, but there's all this other stuff too. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know where Kite, Georgia, is? I know the name. But okay, I Kite is this tiny, tiny little town, and my friend, who this light displays in honor of, is down there. I think the population of the town is five hundred and something. Mm -hmm. But when you visit the place, it's such a wonderful little community. And I said if we could get some manufacturing in places like that, then people could have a choice to leave Atlanta and the metro and the crazy, and they could go to these small middle Georgia towns. We talk about it often down there, especially in the Rural Development Council, to look at smaller investment portals for them. I mean, the state, you know, we really don't have giveaway programs. You know, tax credits and other things like that are earned. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to employ a person for so many months at a certain level and so many of them to get a tax credit. Mm -hmm. well, you're employing 1,500 people, you earn some tax credits. Mm -hmm. But we've got to figure a way out. We talk about a lot, we've tried a few things, somewhat successful on the low end, that, you know, 10, six, mm -hmm. eight, 
you know, uh, Smith Tool and Die in, over in Hinton. It's one of those mm -hmm. great success stories to me. Started mm -hmm. in a barn, yeah. but now mm -hmm. have, what, 30 or 40 employees mm -hmm. making every kind of part for anything in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Made in USA. Great yeah. people. Can you too. believe great that? People, yeah. You know, yeah. And, you know, but they are one of those that you wish counties could also be in that business of giving tax mm -hmm. breaks to, to let a homegrown person like Smith tax exemption on their land or exactly something to help them employ 30 people right in high-paying jobs i mm -hmm, mean those guys mm -hmm. that work over there are technicians of mm -hmm. the first yeah. caliber and that were just not there yet for having mechanisms that rural counties do we did a bill this year that would allow rural a economic development authority in rural georgia to buy a building and then lease it at whatever they wanted to to a doctor there was prohibitions against this stuff. Really? Uh, that's a that's great. a very good move, actually. Yeah. You know, that was the bill that I sponsored. You know, but you know what it did? It would allow them to renovate it, mm -hmm. you know, an unused building, and put a physician in there or APRN or mm -hmm. whoever, mm -hmm. to, and then at whatever rate, but for nothing, like a dollar a year, we didn't care, but to encourage that community to create that small business mm -hmm. that is a doctor's office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a betterment for the community. Huge yeah. betterment for the community. And they'll employ six, eight, ten people. Yeah. Have other things going along around mm -hmm. them because they're just little micro, just little micro businesses. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's where we worked really hard with the Rural Development Council down there to try to find ways to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, it's it's hard, you know, but it's it's something we really work at. Well, <laughs> and when good. we look at why did your child end up in Middle Georgia? I wanted to ask you that. Well, first, first off, and first and foremost, his grandfather, he's very close to Holly's dad. Oh, okay. So that was a draw for him to okay. be down there. Okay. Because Middle Georgia is so beautiful, but I, I yeah. kind of call it the unforgotten. It's forgotten. Mm. People don't, you know. Really? But really, the, the, I love it. You know, one of the major factors is real estate up here was just so prohibitively expensive mm -hmm. compared to, because he's like, I want to live on the lake. Well, I can do it on Lake Sinclair. Yeah. But okay. I'll never, I may not ever be able to do it at, at Blue Ridge. Blue Ridge, right? yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So. And, and people, you know, like my daughter's in Middle Georgia because she went to Mercer. Mm -hmm. They gave her a good scholarship mm -hmm. to go there, and then she met her husband. Mm -hmm. so, she yeah. so there you go. It, there you, you know? go. Yeah. So if our viewers haven't been to Middle Georgia or even South Georgia lately, get out and go look around. I like going to some of the old towns. I bet neither one of y'all have ever been where Fried Green Tomatoes was filmed. Have you ever been yeah, there? Yeah. No. There's another little town that has the white two-story house. It was white in the movie, it's yellow now, but it's, uh, I can't remember the name of the town, but we went to all these little movie sites. And that's one of the cool things that we haven't even touched on. The movie industry came to Georgia because it's a good place to do business. Are they still getting tax credits? But, yes. but they kind of- Is that of, a good thing? Yeah. Sometimes they don't always like think positively. Sometimes they don't think positively. Yeah. Sometimes the movie industry gets a little sideways with me, so, <laughs> so I have to watch them. But but it is cool to see well to see ball ground because you know American Made was done in ball ground and and so it's cool to see Georgia in the movie industry. But we don't like some of the things the movie industry does. <laughs> we don't like some things they make. You know, yeah. But, yeah. You know, it's, uh, the revenue department does a, the department of audits does an audit, and they were critical of some of the things that, with the, with the tax credits, and we continually look at them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the transferability is one of those issues that we're, you'll know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about, it's one of those kind of questionable things that goes on with that. Mm -hmm. But as far as employing people, holy cow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, can't believe how many people employ, and you know, one of our listeners, I'm sure, that lives in Jasper, supplies stuff like this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. His entire job is got a warehouse full of stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they call, well, we need a mm -hmm. yellow guitar. Okay. Well, when you Look, talk to him, I have a retro beauty shop in Morganton, Georgia. Y'all, it's lavender. Uh -huh. the, 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 the bowl that you wash your hair in is lavender. The chairs are lavender. And I said, there's a movie set somewhere looking for <laughs> this. Yeah. There's a movie set somewhere there looking so... Selling. So Jasper, Georgia, if you're watching, there oh, is, I'll and it is you. the coolest set, and it is a retro beauty shop that I have that's completely still intact. Now, somebody in Jasper is purchasing it, but we want to use it in the movie industry. It's really cool. Well, he does, so. And so there's all these things that a guy that um, I met at a meeting at the Republican Party in Jasper, he does electrical work. Mm -hmm. His family are, 
I forget the term they use, grips or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. They all work in the movie world mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. incredible mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And they pay well. That they yeah. couldn't make anywhere else. And right. So he was his was talking to me as people do. Hey, don't y'all messing with this? Mm -hmm. Be careful. Yeah, yeah. Because, because it employs a lot of stuff. people. Yeah, and sure it, it does. And the technical schools in Georgia and and USG, the big universities, have adapted to it. Georgia State has got this building just for movies and gaming, mm -hmm. Huh, mm -hmm. which I was kind of shocked, mm -hmm. but it's a giant business. It is wow. a big business. Yeah. And Did your kids game? Not really. No, no, no. And so, but it is for a lot of people and just employing, training young people how to get into those businesses and you know, technical schools, training of electricians, lighting sets, all the stuff mm -hmm. that goes mm -hmm. on here. Well, we're looking at our guys. They they got mm -hmm. their education here in Georgia, yeah. you know, and, mm -hmm. and they learned to do what they do here. And, and that's exploded. And, and then, you know, you have people like Chick-fil-A that own mm -hmm. their own movie the movie set areas now. Wow. Wow. So that's serious money. And yeah. It, and it's, but it's serious. It's really employing a lot of Georgians. I, mm -hmm. I think that, though, my criticism of it is it seemed to have kind of concentrated really in the metro area. Mm -hmm. You don't really see them out like you did years ago here. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Clint Eastwood did one north of here. Did one in Jasper. Yeah, yeah. and one in Jasper. But, but yeah. you don't see, to me, that as much as you used to. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's they, yeah, they don't. It's easier to well, get and, it done there. And if they do it in some of the smaller communities, that's huge for them long term. Yeah. Because even if they only have a thousand people that really love the movie, they're still going to go and visit that place because mm -hmm. it's that nostalgic sure. trail and that helps oh, yeah. some of these communities that yeah. would not have had revenue. Yeah. Well, the movie Sweet Home Alabama was filmed in Georgia and we went to that set and I interviewed a young man and, and he gave me all the ends ifs and buts about the, the restaurant where you did this and did this and it was just really cool mm -hmm. daycation. It was my daycation, so it was really cool. And so. Sonoya, that's mm -hmm. the... Part of the house movie. near I'm fried green tomatoes guys, is there. So I'm not either. I don't, <laughs> be laughing dead. <laughs> I don't remember anything about movies. It's kind of like that's funny. no room I bring. I got a friend that knows every quote from every movie that's out there, and I'm I like, I love it. I want to have them on. I'm, I'm like, oh, well, I'll cool. ask them and that see. I mean, they cool. know. I'm like, where's that from? Old Pulp Fiction. Where's that yeah, from? Yeah, Avatar. Yeah. I'm like, you so, watch both of those? Yeah. Sweet <laughs> Home Alabama, the best line in the movie. Why do you want to marry me? Why do you want. Uh, See, what did he say at the end? Why do you want to marry me so I can kiss you anytime I want to? Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. That's the last line. <laughs> that's so sweet. But, but, you know, we're looking at Georgia. We are so proud of Georgia. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm so proud of everything you and your family have accomplished because I've watched you. I looked at a show we did 17 years ago. Really? And you think about it, he had a little bit more hair. I had a lot more he hair. He had a lot, and a lot darker hair. color. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's so funny because we've taken this ride together. We've gone through some pretty tragic times in Georgia. We have gone through the economy that, you know what Pickens County did. We had foreclosures on every street. It was horrible. People lost their farms, lost their homes. Many people filed bankruptcy. It was a terrible, terrible time. We went through that. We did come out of it. But we don't want to go there again. We don't want to go there again. It, it was a tough ride, so. No, and uh, they can do their job to protect us on the state level, and mm -hmm. obviously are. Mm -hmm. But we're going to have so to important. do. We're going to have to do our job to vote better people in mm -hmm. on the national level to help protect us from the things that they can't control. Yeah, yeah. And balance is good. You know, that's uh, you know, in, in the Senate race we have now, if Herschel Walker's elected. It it keeps the Senate at an even. If balance. Herschel Walker is elected. Please. We like to see him elected. Please. I don't mind please, that, uh, please remember, it, we are it, saving Georgia. And I want people to vote. You know, um, mm -hmm. I, I tell you, we've really worked hard on elections bills and the last couple of years to really get people out to vote, mm -hmm. make it as easy as possible. And yeah, I'm still a little aggravated when people have to stand in line over 15 minutes. I don't want lines. Mm -hmm. I want. Mm -hmm. Walk in, walk out. And, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I make people. Mad Gilmer County, you walk in, walk out, just like this. Gilmer's fast. Yeah, I got to give Gilmer's them credit. Fast. They do a good yes, job they here. They do a and great want, job. You know, I just want it as easy as they can be. And you know, and we mm -hmm. have problems across the state. One bill I think will come out probably this year is uniform days across and hours across the state because you have Cherokee doing one thing, Pickens mm -hmm. doing one thing, Fulton doing one thing, Gwinnett. 
There's no continuity across the voting times mm -hmm. across the state. Mm -hmm. I think we need to work on that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even in rural Georgia, you know, okay, if you're in Grady County, yeah, it still needs to be open until 7 o'clock mm -hmm. because people work. Mm -hmm. Sure. And you have early voting that's from 8 to 5. It was always 7 to 7. Is it not that now? Well, it is on election day. Okay. But on early voting, it's not. <laughs> frustrates me because in our <coughs> communities, <coughs> work. Mm -hmm. I mean, they leave, you know, if you're on the road in Pickens County at 530 in the morning, mm -hmm. six o'clock, you're on the road with a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. And we're, and, and there's a lot of transition community into Atlanta. So, yes. Yeah. And so I've really, you know, really pushed to get extension of early voting hours. Mm -hmm. and I would like to see them open from eight seven. to seven, yeah. seven yeah. to seven. But, yeah. And if you're going, if, we want to be have Saturday vote. Everybody needs to have mm -hmm. Saturday vote. Mm -hmm. Saturday, seven to seven. I have a question for you because there, there there's legitimate questions about fraud, sure. right? So, I know most people don't understand the blockchain technology, but you know if if we had a blockchain based voting system, it would be impossible to commit fraud. Now the bad thing is if you didn't have checks and balances in place, you could track how somebody voted. But is there any is there any talk or discussion about implementing some of the new technologies we have in to basically eliminate the fraud process so that we don't have dead people voting and things of that nature that that we hear could be happening. I don't yeah, know if they are or not. I think they did a good I think they they really worked on the dead people voting. Thing. Right. I think they found one. You know, they've worked That's on good. some of that but I'm not real familiar with blockchain technology, what that means. So, Well, here's the thing I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll if we had our identities on the blockchain, it, you could never have your uh, yeah. identity stolen or voting. It's it's absolutely amazing technology. People talk, look at it for the currency side. Um, you know, what we've got 90% of the central banks of the world and, and governments are working on implementing a digital currency and the Biden administration said that's their legacy that they want to leave discussion for another day mm -hmm. the technology the, the, the here. technology <laughs> is unbelievable for checks and balances in place so you know that's one thing I, that I've spent a lot of time trying to study it mm -hmm. and and the the implementation of it is going is is so far in our society it's unbelievable now whether Bitcoin or ethereum stay I don't know I'm not talking about that but the technology behind that yeah. could be used for title insurance uh, identity theft, um, voting. It's absolutely unbelievable how it could be used. And, you know, and that's my argument. I'm like, well, just go to the blockchain because you can't, th then, then there is by. no fraud. I'll have to come by and have a Wait, we need Let's to, do that. Y'all need to get together, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we've tried to do, you know, things in the last two legislative yeah. three sessions to clean it up, make sure we're better, you know, with technology and, mm -hmm. and checking. I think there's still things we need to do. I mean, yeah. um, I think I say y'all having lunch one yeah. day. Me too. One I, day, you know, yeah. I think we need to have to allow for a real actual recount, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. physical looking at a ballot. That's it. Yes. That's it. Yes. Well, well like I'm going to throw my directors a kink because if we go over a minute or two, we're going to go over a minute oh, or no. two. <laughs> have you got a closing statement? Because we need uh, to. Yeah. Well, I, no, I just, I just appreciate <clears throat> the opportunity to get to do this. Thank you. And it, it, Thank you for being my, you are my uh, new go-to because yeah. I can no longer call the speaker. So, yeah. Rick, you're done. I'm, well, I'm proud to get to do that yeah. with you. Thank it? you. But, you know, it, it, they're getting elected by the percentages I get elected by. It's just we it's, love it's you. very humbling. I mean, and, and we know you do a good job. Yeah, yeah. you do. Yeah. And we try to communicate that with people, and um, it's fun. I've got a great partner, my wife, Marsha. Absolutely. Know, yesterday I was trying to get back i needed to give a check to the 4-h club and marcia did that for me. <laughs> there you go there you go get back but so it's a team for yeah, yeah. 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 yeah 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 thank you but thank I, you thank you well i'll tell you thank you for what you do yeah because thank you. because i know and and thoughts of considering the sacrifice <laughs> that you make to get there um you, you give up a lot, but you give it up for the community, mm -hmm. and you give it mm -hmm. up for the people around you. So thank you yeah. for that. Because you, you have. You've done a fantastic job. Well, you, you have, and we appreciate you. Well, it is time for us to get out of here. I'm going to head where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet. I hope to see you tonight as special friends. Um, join us. It's going to be a fun night. 
Have a great afternoon, y'all, and do something nice for somebody today. How about that? Yep. Let's do something nice for somebody today. Thank you, yep. Paul Kiker. Bye, y'all. Good to see you. Bye. You're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says welcome to North Georgia. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Take the back roads and really get to know North Georgia. Combine the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation 770-345-2000 or go online to georgiamtc.com. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. Thank <laughs> you.